So with the cast on, we, um, while casting on the stitches, we created this first row and then we worked across to create the second row. So we're going to do the same thing here with the bind off. So we're going to work one row regular and then the bind off will create uh, this seamless edge here. So in the last row of the color work charts, you can see in the first row, right, all plain knitting, we did that as a part of our cast on. And then uh, the last row here is just working plain across in the main color. We're going to do the same thing here with the bind off. So this way, all four edges, as you can see, have are, are framed by the main color. So, so we're just going to work <clears throat> across all the stitches in the main color. So uh, this side, the main color is white. So I'm knitting in white and purling in green. Okay, so what we just worked here is this second to last row of stitches here. So you can see it's that row right after the color work. And now we're going to do the actual bind off, which has these two rows. And so what we're going to do is like a tubular bind off. Whoops. So what we're going to do is separate uh, the stitches on this side and the stitches on this side onto two separate needles. So just put all the white stitches on one needle and all the green stitches on another needle. a little awkward but just take your time so double knit knitting creates uh, basically two pieces of fabric and what we're doing here is separating the stitches for those two sides Again, there are many different ways to bind off double knitting. This is just one way, and this is the way that will mimic the cast on that we used. So it will, again, look like this edge. Right. So I have all the white stitches on one needle, all the green stitches on the other needle. You can get a glimpse here at the inner workings of double knitting. So when you're knitting in the main color, it creates these two separate pieces of fabric. And every time you swap colors, it connects the two uh, pieces together. 
when you swap the yarn and it's quite a uh, quite a clever technique anyway <laughs> so now that we've done this uh, what you're going to do is work across now that they're separate is you're going to work across knitting in one of these colors on one of these sides and then the other one we'll use to kitchener stitch so kitchener stitch will create this last row of stitches here but we want the two pieces to have the same number of rows so we're going to knit one row across regular and then the other row will be kitchener so we'll end up getting these two sides here so it doesn't matter which one you do um, but because of the, the way the yarn is on the side here I'm all set up to knit in the green I'm right-handed not left-handed so I'm not set up to knit with the white so I'm going to knit across with the green and then we will kitchener with the white so um, and this is just regular knitting so we're not going to twist the yarn uh, I'm just going to knit awkwardly with these two straight needles here so again, we're not twisting the green and white yarn at all. I'm just going to knit across in the green. And now I'm finished with the green. So what I can do is break the yarn for the green. And, you know, leave a few inches there so I can weave in that end. <clears throat> so since we're using the white to kitchener stitch, I need a nice long tail. And to make sure I have enough yarn and that I don't run out, I like to take this and go one, two, three, four times across my work. So one, here I'll try to do a zigzag, <laughs> one, two, three and four and that should give me enough length to do the kitchener stitch across um i do four times the length for something as small as this if i were working with a sweater or something <clears throat> i would probably do not quite this much <laughs> i'm not doing a sweater in this video um but yeah okay so then i need a yarn needle and we will kitchener stitch um, these two halves together. All right, I went ahead and moved both halves onto straight needles just so <laughs> there's a lot less uh, dragging on the table. But uh, yeah, so we worked across with the green to knit and now we're going to kitchener stitch with the white. So you do want that in the back and we're going to work across this way. So, uh, if you know the Kitchener stitch, that's all we're doing here. So we go into the first stitch knitwise. And slide that stitch off the needle. Still on the front, go in the next one purlwise. Make sure this yarn doesn't loop around the needles. Go to the back needle, go in purlwise. Slide that stitch off the needle. The one next to it, go in knitwise. And 
and repeat. So it's just knit, purl, purl, knit, knit, purl, purl, knit. That's how I, I remember it. And I'm usually chanting that while I do Kitchener stitch. So in knitwise, slide it off the needle, purl wise. Move to the back, purl wise. Make sure this yarn is looping under the needle. Okay. Slide it off, knitwise. Oops. There we go. Knit. Slide it off. Purl. Purl. Slide it off. Knit. So you should be able to see. Um, the edge coming together here. So I'm just going to keep working this across the uh, the Kitchener. Okay, that's it. Um, so all the stitches are uh, <laughs> stitched off here. Uh, here's the uh, slip knot from our cast on. And yeah, you can see in the bind off that it looks like the knitting just rolls over the edge, just like our cast on. So uh, anyone who's using your coaster or whatever your double knitting project might be, uh, it makes it difficult to tell which uh, side was which. Unless you're a knitter and you know about direction and knit stitches. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that covers the uh, the seamless bind off here. Tubular, tubular bind off.